Hi, welcome to today's presentation. Once again, my name is Obalim and I welcome you. So in this particular lesson, I'm going to teach you how to create a calendar and then also how to be able to customize your calendar so that it will reflect, it will have a true reflection of your project expectations. So once again, you're welcome. So talking about project calendar, if you want to create your project calendar, first of all, you go to the enterprise. So you begin by clicking on the enterprise menu. And then of course it will drop down then you're gonna see calendar here so you click on calendars so once you click on calendars the calendars window pops up now if you take a look at that window you would notice that there are three cat categories or three calendar categories we have the global calendar there's a resource calendar and then there's the project calendar so the global calendar simply means that with this calendar you can assign it to every single project or any project at all that you have in your primavera p6 while the resource calendar is basically for your resources i mean sometimes you may have specific resource persons who have unique working time say for example the resource person who works three days a week or two days a week or probably seven days a week so if that's the case we can actually create calendar for each of the resource persons then there's also the project calendar so project calendar simply Simply means that this particular calendar is for the open project or whatever project that you have currently open within your Primavera P6 so it is only that particular project that can use this particular calendar however note that your project calendar can be converted to a global calendar and of course vice versa so with that said we go back to the global calendar category and then we will see from the global calendar that there are some default calendars that come with Primavera P6. And if you look in my own case, the corporate standard full-time calendar is my default calendar. And so this simply means that any project at all I am creating in P6 by default would have the corporate standard full-time calendar as the calendar unless I decide to change it while creating my project. So don't forget that the corporate standard full-time calendar is a five-day work quick calendar uh, work starts from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day Mondays to Friday that's a corporate standard full-time calendar so but in this exercise we're gonna create a six-day work quick calendar so we're saying that we work six days a week Saturday inclusive and that's exactly the calendar we want to create so what we first of all need to do is to click on this add portion so you click on add so once you click on add the select calendar to copy from window appears truth be told we're not going to be able to create a calendar from the scratch i mean that will of course require writing some lines of codes so that's why what we can possibly do is to copy an already existing calendar so here we're going to choose a calendar to copy from let's still copy the corporate standard full-time calendar so i click on it then I click on the select button. So once I do that, if you notice within my calendars page, it shows me a space where I need to enter my new calendar. So here I need to type in the new calendar that I am creating. So I'm going to type in six day work week calendar. All right, so with that done, I hit enter. So you can see I've created a six day work week calendar. However, not so fast because if you notice, I copied the corporate standard full time calendar, which I explained to you is a five day work week calendar and work starts 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. each day. And then I'm saying now that this is a six day work week calendar. So I now need to go and modify this calendar in order to truly convert it to a six day work week calendar. So I select my six day work week calendar and then this time around i click on modify so once i click on modify you will notice that the modify window shows up so you see the calendar here and you can see clearly that saturday and sunday is grayed out which of course shows you that these are non-working days so if i want to make saturday a working day there are two ways i could do that i could do that do it from the total work hour slash day or from the detailed work hour slash day what the difference between these two simply means is if i do it from here i can just do it on a high level i mean all i simply need to do is on a saturday i put eight hours but then if i do it from the detailed work hour slash day i'll be able to customize the specific working times 
for this particular calendar for example i could choose that work starts at 9 a.m i could choose that work starts at 10 a.m all of that is part of the things i can actually do from the detailed work hour slash day so i will demonstrate how to use the two of them so let's begin with the total work hour slash day so of course make sure you're on the total work hour slash day and then click on work week so when you click on work week uh, the calendar weekly hours window appears and if you notice here for each day of the week from monday to friday we have eight hours each saturday is showing zero which means it's a non-working day and sunday is showing zero at all which also shows this is a non-working day so what i simply need to do is i remove the zero on saturday and then I type in eight there, assuming we work eight hours too on Saturday. So the moment I do that, if I click on OK, you would notice that the gray for Saturday will disappear. So just be on the lookout for that. So I click on OK. And then notice that the moment I do that, it makes Saturday a working day. And that's why you're not seeing the gray for Saturday any longer. So if I check other months, you can see they are all basically the same thing. So that's uh, what we have just done. We've been able to create a Saturday and then we've made it a, a working day. Uh, remember I mentioned that we are still going to do that using the detailed work hour slash day. So let me revert this calendar back to what it used to be before. So I simply go to my work week and then I change my Saturday to zero and then I click on OK. So now that we have done it under the total work hour slash day, now we're going to do it under the detailed work hour slash day. So you click on the detailed work hour slash day and then next thing we'll click on work week. So when we click on work week, it displays the specific work week. Now you notice that Sundays, all the hours are grayed out. But then if we check Monday, you will see that from 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. are not grayed out. So which simply means that these are the working hours for that particular date. That is Mondays. Um, same with Tuesdays up until Fridays, um, just like I have stated earlier on. However, if you will notice now, when I click on Saturday, and Saturday is all grayed out as well, showing us that Saturday is a non-working day. And then let's assume that work for Saturday starts at 9 a.m. and then finishes at 6 p.m. So one key thing you need to understand about these boxes you're seeing here is that each half represents a 30 minutes duration. So this is 9 a.m. to 9.30 and then the second half is 9.30 to 10 a.m. Then if I cut down below, this is 10 a.m. to 10.30 and then the second half represents 10.30 to 11 a.m. So that's exactly how it progresses. So if work starts at 9 a.m., so I click on the first box of on 9 a.m. and then I hold down my shift button and then I click on the second part of 17 which simply means that work starts at 9 a.m. and then ends at 6 p.m. Again, remember, each half is a 30 minutes duration. So the first part of 17 is 5 to 5.30, while the second part of 17 is 5.30 to 6 p.m. So that's exactly why I chose the second part of 17. So once I've done that, I simply click on work. So if you notice, the grade disappears between 9 till between 9 a.m. till 6 p.m., which of course shows that these are working times for Saturday. Then if we also do one hour break between the hours of 12 and 1 p.m. So what I simply need to do is I click on the two halves of 12. This is 12 to 12.30. Then this is 12.30 to 1 p.m. And then I click on non-work. So what I've done now is I have created a calendar that shows that Saturday is a working day. I work for Saturday, start at 9 a.m. and then ends at 6 p.m. with one hour break between the hours of 12 and 1 p.m. So once I finish doing that, I click on OK. You'll notice that the grid for Saturday has disappeared, showing you now that Saturday is a working day. Now, there could also be other specifics. Say, for example, uh, organization holidays, national holidays. Uh, all of these are some of the things we may want to infuse within our calendar. And part of the reason why you do this is you want your calendar to have a real life reflection as much as possible so you don't have a situation where you're having erroneous assignments of calendar to your project activities so one of the most popular holidays of course is workers day which usually comes up on the first of may 
All right, so uh, for some reason, 1st of May 2022 is on a Sunday. So let's assume that, I mean, the government is magnanimous enough and says, okay, uh, let's push the holiday to Monday. So we'll select Monday now, and then we click on non-work. Mm, that's basically what we need to do. So just know that any adjustment you do from this particular calendar page would affect only the item that you've clicked on. However, if you want it to affect generally, all the items that you have within the calendar then that's when you now need to do it from the work week part so that's one key thing you need to understand and then maybe another holiday um, here in nigeria here in nigeria june 12th is um, a national holiday so i select june 12th and then i also click non-work as well all right so once you've been able to do all of this you can simply hit on your OK button. So we have been able to create a six day work week calendar. And then we have also infused the relevant holidays that you have within that particular year. And all of this has actually been inculcated within our calendar. So once you've been able to do that, you would have been able to effectively create this particular calendar. Then you can now click on close in order, in order to close this particular window. I hope this particular lesson was very informative for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be an expert in the use of Primavera P6, I actually do one-on-one -on -one training. So you can contact me using the WhatsApp number below, or you can also send me an email that you're seeing showing on your screen. Other than that, if you want to do a self-study, I have over nine hours of very rich content of this particular course on the Udemy platform. All you simply need to do is check in the description below and then follow the link to be able to assess the course and you could of course get it for a mouth or tree discount thank you so much for watching and i look forward to hearing from you please let me know whichever topic you want me to discuss next and then be sure i will actually talk about it and then please subscribe to our youtube channel turn on the notification so that you get notifications whenever we are discussing any new topic in primavera p6 thank you